talks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And the child. Yes, Lord. The child. What's up, bro? Man, chilling, chilling, chilling. Chilling. Can you hear me? Can you hear me pretty good? Oh, yeah. Definitely, All right, cool, 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 cool. You hear me? Yes, sir. Well, yeah, man, I want to bring you on, man. Like, bro, I knew you from a musician. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> now, Still, you, uh, hey, now. musician, then art, gospel artist, then now you pastor. And bro, I'm like, man, this guy here then <laughs> elevated, bro. Like, seriously. So, Man. Yeah, I had I had to bring you on, man. I got I gotta you know keep it one hundred. Appreciate bring, it, man. Bring the real people on. So yeah, how how's life, bro? Man, life is life, bro. <laughs> twenty twenty pandemic is is life. <laughs> right, right. I I will say this: it has been the hardest. This year has been the hardest to like conquer everything all at once. Like right now. Uh, since January of this year, not only being a pastor, uh, 2020, my album was supposed to drop, bro. It was supposed to drop in August. And because of the pandemic, it was just a bad idea. So it was like, you know what? We're going to hold back to 2021. So you got to think the project was supposed to come out. Um, man, I'm in full-time student and pastoring. And because not being on the road went grabbed another job doing all man, yeah. <laughs> it, man so crazy. so so how are you balancing all that you know what i'm saying like with the because I, I saw you was in school so so how are you balancing like school family pastor because that's those all of those are like full-time positions yes <laughs> man honestly it's called like we always play about it team no sleep that's literally what goes on bro like team no sleep i'm sitting there um at one point because i'm i'm a guy that you know i feel that god has called me i'm anointed but um the way i do sermons i'm a big guy of outline like if i have music if i'm gonna put anything out i'm gonna make it out i'm gonna do instead of doing seven songs for the album i'm gonna do 20 and we're gonna choose and we're gonna pick so when it comes to outline sermons i take six weeks out of um probably six weeks out of the year uh, and I short, I've shortened it down to about two weeks, two to three weeks where I don't preach, uh, you know, going deep consecration and I plan for the year. So like right now, I already have my sermon outlines for the whole 2021. So wow. all I'm doing, all I'm doing is studying and preparing, make sure I have everything taken care of. And with that, you have a little bit more time with school, everything with that parenting, training, and uh, definitely the music. Uh, quiet is kept. No one really knows, man. But uh, 2021, not only is the gospel project going to come out, but have a jazz album that we're working on now. Have a book that we're getting ready to put out. Like, I'm trying I'm trying to get on my bed. Wait, wait a minute. Right now, wait a minute. <laughs> you you give me too much. Bruh. You're giving me too much. So, a jazz album coming out? Jazz, bro. Wow. We're going to knock the jazz out, man. I'm trying to I mean, it's just time ready, man. Um, and I'm just, I've already hit up D, plan on getting you on that joint, man. I, the hardest thing is trying to have a live studio session. Cause you know, with jazz, you want to vibe with people. You don't want to send the music off and give them the scene to. Now nah, I want to be there. Yes. Okay. And whatever we have, it just cut and then we go. Yes, sir. Yeah. That jazz, man, it's definitely a vibe. You know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah, yeah. you got, you got to cut in the studio together on that. 
Right. Yeah. So you got the jazz album, you got school, all this stuff going on. I saw you had something with Yahoo Hunter coming out. I saw that too. So it's like music, music, music. Like, Bruh, man, this is that, crazy. That, that, you know, like how most people, like back in the day, I never will forget. Uh, I'm sure he don't mind me using his name. Uh, me and Darius, when I was first working on a project, and that's a lot of things what people don't know. But I'm working, been working on this gospel project for 10 years and just wow. possibly drop three singles because I don't believe in just dropping anything. If I'm going to drop a calling card, I want you to call me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that first moment of getting into the music business, uh, I ran into Aaron Lindsay and Terrence Vaughn. Went to Terrence Vaughn and, you know, that in those days, you know, you have the Kurt Franklin, but the James Fortune band, that was basically the band where everybody like, Yo, I want that sound. Yeah. So for our generation, that sound right now is Yon Hunter, man. And shout out to D Spears, man. Um, I told him I was like, man, I wish I could get in contact. He was like, well, man, I work with him on some drum things, but I'm gonna link you up. I'm gonna give you the number. And man, that's gonna be the name of the album and the single. And when I tell you, I, I put it this way. A lot of a lot of people still right now has not heard I made it over. Um and they just clay claim that to be an eight to ten. I kid you not. This track with Yon Hunter is gonna put I made it over at a four or five. Bro, everything you put out is like heat. <laughs> you know what Bro. I'm saying? Like is is heat because I mean you got that, then you got nobody but Jesus. Like, bro, that, oh, that, that right there is 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 crazy. Man, then you got the video people, too. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize that's a life story, man. That's I'm telling the testimony on my life. Like a lot of people don't even realize it. You showing um, that's what's going to be in the book, man. Talking about redeem, like, you know, going through infidelities with me and my wife and me messing up or having a problem with instead of with me and my dad, when my dad passed, instead of going to a shrink, I turned to the bottle. So it's showing all that in that video and you seeing the arguing, the pulling of the liquor bottle, no leaving the house, me literally being like this. And then only Jesus could have brought me out of the stuff that I was going through, bro. So it was like, I've in these last seven years of pastoring and literally I just celebrated 17 years of ministry. I've learned the best way of doing ministry is not hiding, but having full transparency. So it's wow. like, that's what's helping. So that's that's what I'm all about now. Man, congrats on that, man. Not too many people. Can say <laughs> Appreciate that. it. And that that's that's a huge accomplishment, man, that, to be pastor yeah. alone. Like, and then you jumped in, you know, you know, the whole situation man. with your with your dad. I remember that. And you just straight jumped in and took off. You with the building right. situation, all that. <sighs> you know, like true <laughs> perseverance. So right. Congrats, man. And I, I definitely, you know, look up to you on that, bro, because Man, Nobody but Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody but Jesus, bro. I'm, Literally. I'm so yeah, man. Um, man, that you took me off with that. But yeah, uh, man, music. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, what I'm gonna do anyway? I know we recording, but what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be cutting stuff up anyway and okay. editing and all cool, that. Cool. Uh, gee whiz, bro. I want to talk about. Like the the how you went from musician to artist to how that how that whole transition and you can compile it however you want to. I know it's kind of on the fly, you know what I'm saying? But Man, so me, me, so let's let's let's, let's talk artist. about that. Like how did you, how did you go from musician to gospel artist to pastor to like how how did that happen? Man, I I be I said the simplest way. Uh, one it had to be God. Two, a lot of people don't know my history. Um, of course, born in 1984. In 1987, I was three years old and I already started playing drums. Now, the crazy thing about it was I was actually on pocket beat. Like there's videos of me playing at a musical with my mom at three and four years old. And I'm in the pocket, like literally can barely hit the can barely reach, but I'm in there. 
So from four to about uh, four to about, you know, possibly 11 years old, I'm on the drum hitting it hard. Like, and at this time, you know, like everybody else, they kind of did the Tony. No one knew about Tony Royster. Nobody knew about, you know, those, those to Ronald Bruno. Nobody knew about drummers like that. So in our city, it was basically, who is this nine, 11, 12 year old kid, kid rolling around with Iron Cobra, Cobra foot pedals and Silverback and killing at the church musical. Like, and it went from that to, uh, we had our first ice storm. I was 11 years old and man, when they took us out of school, went to the keyboard and I was already singing cause my dad was a quartet singer. So he, I just literally was listening to melodies so it was Jesus the best thing, go figure. And I started in F and literally my dad walked by the door and I was playing the full chords. So my dad came, got my mom was like, hey, make him do the other, make him play the melody. So she taught me, was like, this how this goes. So it was like eight or nine o'clock at night and I was up to like three or four in the morning. He woke up the next morning, I had the whole song. So now it went from that to, being on the drums to my daddy, like, okay, he playing the drums, but play on the keyboard, play on the piano. 12, 13, by 15 years old, I was already playing the organ and keyboard at the church. By 17, no, by, I give it by 21, and this gonna blow your mind, cause I wanted to, I'm glad we're doing this, bro. 21 uh, is when I basically showcased my talent because Darius, these spirits had went off to Southern. I was at Lamar and I was studying John Peters and a couple of other cats. And there was this big, big choir college night with D Mac on the drums, James Brown, JB on the drums, Philip Cornish, Walter on the keys, all on the same night. Baker, on, Nick Baker on bass, bro. And that night they was like, hey, yo, get on keys. Everybody was scared. Nobody was touching that boy. <laughs> I hopped on <laughs> keys and it was just like, okay, yeah, I got it. So it was like, yo, I was known as the drummer, but that day I was known as, okay, there's Jerry. He the keyboard player. So then it went from that to, okay, I started playing for every pastor that would come in for Citywide. They'll call me to get on Oregon. So that made a big name. And I was already from 15 to about, about 14 to about 21. I was in a quartet group called the Brothers of Praise. Well, we did that for the longest. And, you know, no bad blood, but everybody kind of went their separate ways, did they do. And they still can sing. We might have fact at a funeral. We got together, uh, I think it was two years ago. And we sang together, man. It just brought back old memories. I mean, it was a great moment. And... Bro, from that, I always sang, was singing since I was five years old. So I was like, man, I'm gonna do a gospel album. Went to uh, uh, Chris Walker studio, um, where Nikita Claire Fox, Terrence Vaughn, uh, my aunt Ivy Lynn Taylor was in the mix. Um, man, just so many big names, bro. I mean, the same, I was, I was awarded uh, my aunt, I always love her for the fact that she never handed me the business or handed me the keys to the music and was like, okay, we're gonna get you signed this and that. It was more, no, you're gonna learn the music. So, I mean, like Quiet is Kip, James Fortune, Ty Tribute Sessions at some of these studios, I'm on the couch just sitting there like this. Regina Bell, I pulled Darius in and we're in there while they sleeping and grinding, we sitting there sleeping watching where I literally learned the business instead of just jumping in. Wow. Um, I had a, had a trial and error um, in that time because at this moment, I'm trying to put out product and because of my will, man, I, I, can, I, I can let this story out. That's one of my heartbreaking stories. I was supposed to get signed by a record label um, at this time while doing that. And, you know, people will be jealous and envious and somebody wanted one of their family members to make it. Mm -hmm. And they literally called um, the studio where I was recording and the label, because it was between me and their family member and a couple other people. 
they basically called them and told them, hey, man, you got to be careful with this guy. You know, I hear something happened between him and his wife. I hear in Port Arthur, his street life back in the day, what he used to do. And the dude brought me into the table and literally was like, hey, man, I really wanted to give you the keys to this to this label and get you to sign. But, you know, your business called here. So we're going to have to go another way. Man, he crushed me like crushed. Me. Bro, are you like, are you serious? That kind of stuff I, happened in man and small city like Port Arthur. And that was like one of the dreams. And from that moment on, it was like, yo, man, I'm I'm done. Like I'm. This is not supposed to happen in gospel world, man. So um, I got in the ministry, started preaching, just backing up my pops, kept writing, kept doing this and that. And the year um, my dad, before my dad died, it's a crazy story, man, because me and my wife, a lot of people didn't know it. My dad had stage two cancer, but he didn't tell the family he really had stage four. So he had stage four cancer, and then my mother uh, got a uh, breast cancer. So imagine me pushing my dad in one uh, part of MD Anderson and my wife pushing my mother in the other side. So this is all going on. I'm sitting there like, God, man, you supposed to, I'm supposed to be writing. I'm supposed to be singing in ministry. At this point, I'm like, man, I don't want to sing, man. I want, I'm, I just want to take care of my family. We actually moved in with my parents and late at night, bro, I would literally walk into my dad's room while he was asleep. And it's like, I could hear him fighting for breath while he would breathe. Mm. So at this moment, I'm sitting there like, I'm, I'm like, God, you want me to do this, but at the end of the day, I'm not feeling it anymore. I'm not, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. So push came to shove, man. My dad, um funny story sunday best comes i'm at work sunday right. best comes and they call and they say hey man you gotta go for sunday best man I, that's not me man i'm 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 more playing re recording music singing just going on my own so a lot of people didn't know that story i'm at work and literally just made up in my mind. It was like, please go. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna go. Right. I made that decision, bro, at six o'clock that evening. When wow. I got there, I got there the day before because I thought you just signed up. Didn't know I had to stay overnight. So I get there Sunday best. Don't know I'm gonna have to stay overnight. So mind you, I don't have any clothes. They're not giving out numbers. It's over a thousand people, bro. So literally, I got to get out of my car and uh, I can't think of this cat name because he actually was on uh, Dark Skin, the guy from Dallas. Um, but um, I oh, was Sunday with him. Sunday's best? Yeah. And he was a short dude, but he literally, me and him, I told him, I said, hey man, look, when you want to sleep, I'll sit and keep the spot. When I want to sleep for a couple hours, you keep my spot. Right. So I got there at six. So he wanted to take the first shift. So I stayed up to like 12. Standing outside, bro, it started raining. We couldn't even move. No food. They coming out, giving us water, stuff like that. Then I go take the shift. I go sit in my car, go to sleep for a little bit. I'm in my truck. I'm knocked out. Wake up, it's four in the morning. Now it's over 2,000 people outside standing Golly. up. I get in there and I'm like, I'm already like, I don't want to do this, man. I'm Port Arthur is the main one like, hey, go. So mm -hmm. I get in there, man, and just, just so happened, I just said sung background for Kim Burrell mm -hmm. for her Christmas Cantana. So I get there, man, and my first, and I got the video, I posted it before. I get there, man, so it's St. Agnes is full to capacity. People going, I'm seeing people from Port Arthur, I, I'm not calling no names, people from Port Arthur, Beaumont, Orange, I'm seeing them coming in, <laughs> oh, as they turn, hi, see them come right back. All right, we gone. Yeah. Man, they letting us go like that? So 
I finally get my shot. Kimber Rail sees me and she's looking like Port Arthur. And I'm like, man, the Kim was good. So I see it. I lay my first train. I sing. Man, sung um, I Surrender All. Mm-hmm. Bruh. Now, mind you, I'm singing off of emotion because I just, we just left MD Anderson with my dad that, that Thursday or Friday. Right. So that's all in my mind. My At this point, I just seen my mom for the first time. I'm crying because I just seen my mom and I just realized she has no hair. Mm. So all that similar, I really don't want to be there, bro. So we go to the second round, make the first round, go to the second round. Now is V Mike McKay, the dude from the BT or whatever, he in there and another one. So that video comes out. I'm saying, bam, sung it. Go to the next round. Now I'm I just call my wife. I'm not, she didn't talk to nobody for some reason. Port Arthur found out. Facebook is going ham. Yo, Jared Phillips made it to the third round. Such, such, such. I really think it was my mom or my dad. Probably was my dad at the time. Let somebody know. Bro, I'm not telling nobody nothing. I'm looking on the timeline because you're not supposed to say anything because when you walk in, you automatically sign a contract. Right. So now I'm at the third. I'm at my third round, the final round. It's Donnie McClurkin, um, Yolanda Adams, <laughs> and one of my gospel crushes for many years, C.C. Wyden. <laughs> I walk in there. I look. Donnie speaks. Um, I ain't doing Mr. McClurkin. I'm talking to all of them. C.C. just says, hello, Mr. Phillips. I'm up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God. <laughs> I'm sitting there. And, bro, I'm, I'm not starstruck because all my life I've been between Los Angeles and back home. So I've seen stars before. So it's like it's all or nothing. She right. like, they like, okay, give me what you got. Bro, I kid you not. I don't know what key I was in. I definitely wasn't in the keys that I started in from the last two. I sang and literally Donnie McClurkin said, wow, you have control. You have everything. Yolanda Adams was like, boy, you got that all on you. CC Wine is because I'm looking like, okay, that's two yeses. So right. CC said, no matter what anybody tells you, you there's no reason for you to not make it. You've already been here. You've been here before. I, I can't go against them. All three yeses. I'm losing it because I'm like, yo, did I just win? Yeah. So I'm not knowing the, knowing the scoop on Sunday best. So we get to the back. Kurt Franklin is there. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, And he... Does the interview, man? All three yeses. How you so they're recording doing all that? So then I go to the next interview, do that part. They call my family. Now my family is notified that I won. They all excited. Then this and that. So at this point, they come with a contract. Mm -hmm. The contract says BT Sunday best, and it shows what they get. Now let's just give an example. An example is so to say they get 80%. The distribution gets another 10. And then for four years, you're tied down to five. Think about it. If we think about it, just be real and transparent. Every Sunday best artist you know from when they first started the show, they got about four or five years under their belt then you don't ever hear from them again. Facts. That's that BET contract. So I literally was like, yo, I don't think I'm about to sign this. Like, not without having a lawyer. And I mind you, I made it over is already out. Right. So I'm already spinning on this type of thing. So I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And literally they said, well, we're going to call you back. They called me back for the first, because I didn't know it was a callback off there. They accepted like, I made top 100, no, top 50 out of 3,000. So I got the call back for the top 25. When it got the call back for the top 10 to make it to the TV show, the question was asked, did you sign the contract? 
Nah. Okay, well, we're going to move somewhere else. That's the only reason why I wasn't on the show. I, right now in my office, I have the Sunday best paper where it says I got all three yeses and my number and the picture from my interview. My mama, my mother framed it for me, man. So it's like, after that, that was the major moment, man, of just kind of being like, yo, I got what it takes. Right. And I, I just decided, it was like, you know what? If a major artist, if a major label decides to sign, cool, let's talk distribution. We, hey, hey y'all, I'm down. But it showed me the business of at least, I'm not scared to say I'm not gonna make it. So to go from the music portion to the artist and now knowing I can make it, that's when, okay, we're gonna start learning the business. Well, I don't have to drop an album. I can get royalties off the singles. What if I do drop a single and the single spins over 5,000 times and it's spending that much in a month? Well, now a royalty check can come. Well, what happened if I monetize my video on Facebook and drop a nobody but Jesus track? Okay, well, they will, um, I can literally look at the fact of the single will drop and the single may do, might sell possibly five to 10,000 copies. But if I monetize the video and get over 100,000 views, now I got $50,000. Right. So it's the learning the business of aspect of all that, man. So that was the artistry of that, going from that and then going to the pastor part. I've, I started preaching at 19 years old, 2003. I already okay. knew, I was already preaching, man, and running, man. And literally being behind my dad, my dad literally, um, and a lot of people won't even believe it, my dad was an old school guy, which means if he knew you was doing wrong, he'll sit you down. My dad right. sit me, sat me down, bro, from playing and preaching for almost six months because I was wild and out doing stuff I wasn't supposed to, man. And the day I came back, the video is on Facebook right now. I don't know what I was talking about, man. I was, <laughs> I, I'm preaching at, cause it's like when you look at then now, from then to now, bro, I'm looking at it and I was preaching at paradise. I basically just got off of punishment from my dad. I'm grown, I'm 21, 22 off of punishment from like, Hey man, you gonna learn how to do this correctly. And man, even times when preaching revivals and the house people shouting and running all over the place. And my dad at the revival takes me and said, hey man, son, uh, hey pastor, we're, we're, we're gonna take him out to eat. No, he gonna come home with me. Okay, cool. All right, we going to the hotel. Well, dad, where we gonna go eat? He took me to McDonald's, bro. Wow. Got me a dollar menu. Took me and said, I don't know what you was preaching, but what you was preaching, that wasn't it. Then the people were shouting and going all over the place. Nah, son, what you were saying was putting them on emotional high. That wasn't what that text meant. Nah, we going my dad broke that text down. I mean, I had to break that text down, bro. Got home at 10 o'clock, stayed up till four or five o'clock in the morning until my mother told him, that's enough. Hey. And I had to rewrite all three of those sermons, did the revival. So that's the type of dad my dad was. So. When I preached at Paradise that night, the pastor was like, hey man, um, literally over, over everybody, nobody knew who I was on a preaching scene. They knew me musically wise. Pastor straight up told my dad, pastor, I don't know why you was trying to hide him, but he's not gonna be, not be here long. I didn't know what he was talking about, but my dad knew. He already, God already had talked to my dad and let him know what kind of preacher and pastor I was gonna be. God came to me and told me this already at 2021, already had visions of pastoring. Some of my dad was there, but some of my dad wasn't. So I was like, well, man, maybe I'm getting ready to go off. That was the last day my dad heard me preach and literally, well, preaching out. He's standing and he lost so much weight because of cancer. And I'm leaning all the way back, giving it all I got. And that after that day, he kind of ran into a bad season, but God started giving me dreams for a whole year of a whole year of 2013, bro. My dad preached three times. Mm. I preached the whole year. 
I taught Bible study the whole year. That's why when it came to my dad passing, the, it wasn't the fact that the church didn't have to vote. They literally knew who they wanted because they had heard me the whole year. Yes, sir. They already had fell in love with me. They already did that type of stuff. So becoming that pastor moment, it was a big deal for me. God already had told me. I just didn't know how major it was. So that was another th reason why I laid back off the music and dropping the album because I needed to make sure I did the right thing as a pastor. So quiet as kept, first off, my dad dies uh, 2014, January. That February, I was already interim pastor. I'm already, matter of fact, two weeks later, I'm already preaching. Right. Um, April, I'm already installed. By that March, we were going into a building. My dad had just did a building project. The project person and the consultant and the person that was over it stole over 80 grand from the church. Sided with the bank. Now this is year one. Right. <laughs> No, no honeymoon phase, bro. So I'm literally trying to get everything, get everything right. Um, after we find out that they try to take me to court. Now, mind you, my daddy was the one that signed papers. It was a six, uh, nine, 10 month turnkey job. Well, because he died, my name was Jerry Frank Phillips. So they tried to put it on me because I was the pastor. They tried to sue me for $1.2 million. <laughs> <laughs> bro this year one <laughs> so after this man a year goes by man we're putting money in put brazen money doing this and doing that the bank decides that they're going to switch up and goes with the consultant now we lose the 800 what a one point something million dollar church not only do they take the new building but they take the old existing building where we were at this point, how, how can they do that? Because of because of the fact it's a turnkey job, the bank side sided with the consultant after saying that they was going to side with us. Right. So they just basically cut all ties, washed their hands, so that they can get out of the deal. Mind you, now I have to find somewhere for a true vine to go. Now I'm at New Hope for eleven o'clock service. Zion Hill for Bible, no, Zion Hill for choir rehearsal, another church. Then I'm at the Port Arthur City Building for, to have meetings in Bible study at. This is Three crazy, different bro. places. This is crazy. Now, now, mind you, they still saying, keep on preaching, keep on singing. Now, at this point, the marriage is rocky because I'm frustrated because I haven't even grieved over my father yet and all this has happened. Now, because we had to leave, bro, man, there me mean, that means that there's no money. But my but the God that we serve said, when you're a full time pastor, you trust God. You preach the you preach the message, so you got to trust God. Because to be honest, it's kind of like saying if I'm a pastor, and I'm saying trust God, tithe, give, give your service. If I go get another job. That means I ain't really putting all my trust in God. That means I'm not being faithful. I can't do this year one. So now I'm trying to be faithful to the word and faithful to his calling for what he said to me. So now we lost our home. Now two cars have been repossessed. Hmm. I didn't have a salary for over six months, bro. They still saying, keep preaching. <laughs> come sing. Hey, man, will you come sing for us and this and that? And I'm like, now, mind you, at this moment, people are starting rumors of saying things about me and my wife, saying things about me, saying things of the church is my fault, all this type of stuff. Um, he has been. He's not putting out music because he's washed up. They're not even realizing what I'm going through. And... Literally speaking, bro, it one night I'm crying, bro, like crying, crying um, to the point where I honestly tried to take my life, mm. literally tried to take my life. And the only reason why it didn't happen, literally, 
the gun never clicked. Mm. And literally, I mean, it was a it was a moment where I was like, and literally, it was a moment where I was across the pier, I'm bawling out crying, bro. And I just felt the presence, I don't know, of the Holy Spirit, but I'm still grieving over my pops. Right. I look to the right, and while I look to the right, I'm in his truck, his hat is on the seat. And I kid you not, the radio station automatically went to 1250, Kalo 1250, where um, our gospel station was being played. And it was my daddy singing, I won't complain. I lost it, bro. Went back home and was like, okay, God. All right. Okay. So I just started doing, man. And I didn't worry about what people said or how they felt. I was like, God got me, had put me on this earth for a reason to just serve, do right. what's the necessary things. And bro, we're, it, we, it took a whole year. We, had, we didn't have a building. And we finally <laughs> went from 14th Street at a church that had seven pews, two bathrooms, one classroom, and we used a fellowship hall to put four Sunday school classes in, uh -huh. which was a part of the kitchen as well. And moved that to God, let us move to... Um, Right off the highway, bro. We our church is off the highway, our new location. Right. Six five hundred. We have about eight classrooms, a fellowship hall. I have my own office. My wife has her own office. My mother, secretary, have her own office, own kitchen, all that. How, how, we how, get did, how did you how did you find that? How did you find the building? Man, somebody called and was like, Hey, check out the building. I walked in, and, and the killing thing is, it's the same place where I went to um, daycare as a four-year-old, same church. I'm looking like, man, I'm, I'm trying to remember this church as a Nazarene church at the time, and I'm like, man, this church was small. I remember this church. They used to give me graham crackers and chocolate milk. I remember this spot. I walk in, man, and I'm just like, whoa. But I'm like, hey, we can make do. It's, it's definitely better than where we were. Right. We, we, we're off the highway. It's right next to Dairy Queen, gas station, um, all type of restaurants. Okay, hotels. Hey, we're in a great spot. We get in the first Sunday because I changed the, the True Vine name to Greater True Vine. Right. I wanted to keep the years, keep the ministry, but I was like, I want to make a move. I want to make a big move to where, kind of like um, church what I was. If I'm not mistaken, it's called Hollowbrook Baptist Church, but they changed, changed the church what I was. Right. New beginning, but you still holy years. Changed the Greater True Vine Church. Man, the first in history in Port Arthur, Texas, we were at New Hope Church, and because we started just a new name, we wanted to make the rejoin process. That day, 113 people joined at one time. It's so crazy. they don't even know we're getting ready to go into a new building. So I make the announcement. We go to the new building. We get there in January. Now, mind you, I told you this year one going to year two now. Right. Oh, remember, we got we got to keep up. That's that's daddy passing. They didn't took the church. Lost everything, all this stuff going on. So we finally get a new building. Six months later, Harvey hits. Mm, yeah, I remember that. I remember saying that. Yeah. Destroys the whole church. Destroys our home. We lose two cars, the house. I'm helping rescuing people. The church has six feet of water in it. So now we're out of the church again for another year. At this point, I'm like, all right, God, forget it. <laughs> I'm like, man, what, what am I gonna what am I gonna sing about? Like, what am I gonna preach about? What what how can I talk to these people and tell them how to survive when I'm hurting as well? Right. I'm getting rescued out of a truck like it's a war zone because you have helicopters traveling, picking people up off their roofs. 
Matter of fact, it was so bad, the ambulance couldn't get through. So people that died, they had to put them people in dump truck. We're helping people put dead bodies in oh, bags man. in dump trucks to get nah, them to their mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. Woo. So now that story is all that's and like I said, man, the book that I'm writing is all in that. Uh, my fact is almost done. So it's like we have all that getting taken place. And now it's to the point where, hey man, it's time to rebuild. The church that we were leasing from says, we don't want nothing to do with the church no more. You can buy it from us now. Now we can buy it. Okay, it's gonna be 200, 300, something thousand dollars. Okay, let's try to see how we can get this done. I can't go to my church and tell them, hey man, we're going to have to do a stewardship campaign. We already did that with True Vine before my dad died, and over 80000 was taken. It was stolen. Right. I can't go, and we're, we just lost the church twice. I can't go to the church. Hey, y'all, I need 1000 from you. I need 1000 from you. I need 500 from you, 100 from you. I can't do it. Right. So now I literally say, okay, God, whatever you're going to do, you do. At this point, now I'm preaching God's blessing me to start hitting the road. I'm preaching all over the world now, nationally. And my dad always told me, son, the way you're preaching is you're going to go to more places than me. You're going to stand in more powerful pulpits than I stood on. By this time, I'm preaching at National Baptist Conventions and conferences, schools, and doing this stuff. And I had to preach. No, I had to, I went to a feudal conference. Ralph West is preaching. He's in E natural. I hate E natural. There's no argument. Everybody that knows me, I haven't played in about four years. They go back up Ralph. Man, I ain't going back up Uncle Ralph. No, bro. That's... Get on the keys. He said, Lord, help. <laughs> I play and I'm playing. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. We get through with the service. They have a meeting with us at the table. Me and a couple of other pastors, we tell our story. Ralph West tells me, hey, man, come to my office mm -hmm. in about three weeks. He told me the date. I go. So by now, we're the church. We're just putting money. Hey, let's buy the wood. We're raised. We're selling dinners. We're doing everything to refurnish. We get the wood, we get it, we get the frame all done up, we get the stage done. Our member is a carpenter, so he's doing, I'm up there helping. Uh, as a matter of fact, that brick wall that you see, mm -hmm. that grater is on, I did that myself. Pastor doing work, I'm serving. It I, in. I put the wall, it took me, a, took me a week to do. I get to church with our walls, bro. I said, I'm here to see Ralph West. He's busy, but he knew you, he told us you would be coming told us to give you this. What's this? I get to my car and I break down 16 grand. The chairs that I needed for my building was 14 grand. Right. So now I got, I got, I got the chairs for my church. So I, I got a good brother, buddy uh, for new faith named uh, Pastor Jermaine Lewis, uh -huh. Andre Lewis. He hears what he's done. He calls me, hey man, come by the office. I'm thinking we going, you know, hey, I ain't going to do this and that. I'm going to chill with him for the day. His secretary hands me an envelope. I'm like, God, I understand you good, but I know you ain't that good. You, I know I've been serving, but I know you're not about to do this to me again. He calls me, bro, you told me your carpet costs 3000 Here's a $4,000 check. Mm. So now I got my carpet for the church. Now we didn't lay the carpet. We didn't, bro, two Sundays later. We don't even have the church fully finished. I got a mic in my hand. Let's have church. Yes, sir. We're going in. So it's just been a building process. And I asked God because at one point, I literally was like, hey, man, I'm cool, pastor. I'm cool preaching. You know, I don't, I don't have to drop nothing else. Man, my, my, my singles did well. It's nationally known. I'm good. One night. God wouldn't let me sleep, man. And I wrote in one night, six songs. Went to Logic, 
put the frame down for all of them. All right, cool. One of them was nobody but Jesus. Right. Bruh, as soon as I started getting to nobody but Jesus right, and I heard the playback, God says, I'm not, he basically told me in my sleep, well, in, in a voice, soft voice, I haven't forgotten about you. Because mm -hmm. my dream wasn't to pastor. My dream was to go all over the world doing music and singing. Mm -hmm. Right then and there, the video goes, honey, and, honey, and thinking right now, it's at 120 something thousand views. Now it said this, and God is just showing me, hey, here go another song. Hey, we're going to put you with this producer. Hey, we're going to do this with this person. Hey, I wanted you to be available to me. Now I'm going to show you how much I'm available to you. I'm sitting there like, man, I got a track with Yon Hunter. Yo, right. Kyrie Tyler is on one of my tracks. Yeah, Yo, right. This is crazy. So, and then with the jazz stuff, I'm watching Corey Henry, Snarky Puppy, and all this type stuff. I'm like, you know what? I can do that. But you know what? If if God, funny, funny story. I said, God, I really wish my bros like JB and D Mac was home or we can vibe. Man, I know he can, we can get this mug going. COVID hits. Guess who comes back home? D Mac. <laughs> Yep. He comes home. I shoot him what I have. In less like, than 24 hey. hours, he had to be home. <laughs> <laughs> so, bro, literally shoot him the track. He loved it. Hey, Amen. So this what you're doing. And from that moment, I sent him that one track. And I've already gotten about eight together. And I mean, just soul vibe, just yeah. music going. So, man, it's just... It's just trying to stay focused. And right now, in school, that's no sleeping. Some days doing 12-hour papers, doing this and doing that, because I had to stop school. Uh, I have living college life. Shout out, Sid and Romeo. I know you're cute. We was at the same, hey. at the same <laughs> university. But, man, it's like I had to stop because I had a family. I, yeah. I was in church serving with my dad. So... God says the same this summer. I'll be graduating with my first degree, uh, Grass, doing everything, man. So it's like everything is starting to fall into place, man. And one thing that I can say, not only about myself, but definitely anybody that's watching, never let naysayers for what they knew about your past hinder what God has for you in your future. I always tell people God is looking for a partnership with you. There's supposed to be a relationship, not a sponsorship. Huh. And I always tell people, hey man, don't when it comes to even relationships, hey man, look for somebody to partner with you. Don't look for a sponsor. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey man, if I'm if 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 I got a dollar and I got 75 cents, at least come with a quarter. It's same thing with ministry and same thing with with your music. Hey man, if I if I got the foundation, if I got if I, if I put this down, at least help me play. Hey, record. Hey, let's do this. It's so many that you can, so much you can do. But so many people get so devastated by people saying, trying to be so negative with the odds and saying, you know, you can't do that. Man, nah, man. You know, your past, they ain't going to like this. Or, you know, nah, they ain't going to feel that. And half of the time, they want you to stay at the level where you are with them so you can't <laughs> yeah. know where God is trying to take you. Yeah. So I learned, man, like right now, I I have about six great brothers uh, that's all over this world, man. Um, Frank Harris, Pastor Jameson Hunter. Well, let me say it right, right. Pastor Frank Harris, Dr. Jameson Hunter, George Lewis Parks, um, Philip Point, Dr. Philip Pointer, T. Grant Malone. Uh, my little bro, Jeremiah Jackson, like I secluded myself from everybody and started having people in my prayer life that I knew really cared about me that will tell me when I'm wrong and encourage me when I'm right. Hey, that's, and, that's very important, especially when you're trying to go somewhere. You got to have the right uh, circle, bro. Bro, you gotta have the right circle. Like, like, bro, like it's the only way like, um, 
Like even look, even watching your ministry, man. I'm I'm and please shoot me the link, man. I gotta get a shirt. I've been trying to oh, get yeah. a shirt for the last year, bro. Like, yeah, seeing nah. stuff, seeing stuff like that, bro. Like people, they don't they don't agree with it because it's not them. Yeah. They don't agree with the message or agree with the vibe because it's not them. They're not making it. They're not going. Yeah. And I had to literally put it to where it was like, man, like crazy. Three weeks ago, having a conversation with Yon Hunter on the phone. And he's like, bro, we don't have to wait for big distribution deals anymore. We don't have to wait to a whole year to put out a project so you can make sure that Walmart will give you the cut and all that. Hey, man, promote it. Say it's coming out. Drop it. Bro, it's too easy hey, now. That's the same thing I tell everybody, bro. Don't don't worry, just just jump, <laughs> jump, bro. jump, bro. Jump, man, and it, whoever Can gonna we... support, gonna support. Jump, bro. Don't worry about it. Go. And that's 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 the big thing, man. That's the big thing. And being my biggest thing right now is I don't want to be a failure. Um, uh, pastoring has done so much and being music ministry, but the Bible says that God comes first, then your family, then the church. My dad was an old school preacher, but he did make those football games, those track games, those track meets and any other extracurricular activity that he could make, he tried his best to make. I went a step further and was like, I'm not only gonna be at my kids games, I'm gonna help train them. Yeah. I don't want to be a failure at being a father. Uh -huh. So that was my biggest thing, man. I want to make sure my kids know that I love them. I want them to see me cooking for their mother, showing them like about two weeks ago, I did a daddy daughter date, was able to take my mother uh, out to eat for a birthday and went to AV with mm. my girls and my kids. So you know how that, that bill was, was, was crazy. Hit but I wanted Oh God, but I wanted my kids, to, I wanted my, cause I have three teenage daughters. Yeah. All of them in high school, bro. And a two year old son. So I wanted them to see like, hey, this is how you should be treated. Hey, this is what I want you. I want you to see, you have seen daddy at his worst. Now I want you to see daddy kind of growing, coming to his best. Yes, sir. I want to show you that I didn't forget about you. And I want to show y'all true love. Cause y'all seen the love all throughout life. Like I would literally, bro, for my kids, bro, not only did I was a minister of music, I played the minister, I was a minister of music, playing the keyboard, doing music. And at night I was at from nine o'clock, no, from six o'clock till three o'clock in the morning. I was a janitor at a refinery, bro. So, you know what? I don't think a lot of people know that you work, bro. Wow. No, I'm serious. <laughs> I don't think I don't think a lot of people know like that you work, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't really, it, it ain't really out there like that. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, they like, see you pastor and they see you, yeah, you know, but ain't nobody, don't nobody see the, the, the back bro. end. Yeah, like literally, literally Sunday, I will preach. I will, I will get, get my notes together. I'll go over while praise and worshiping, but it's quick. I can't be there too long, so I get up every Sunday morning around six or seven o'clock, and I just make sure my mind is in tune and praying with God. After that, I preach. If I didn't Monday, Monday is Bible study because when I was on the road, it was more efficient for me to do that Monday and do school, get started for that, and be able to study and prep for that week for that next Sunday. Yeah. So, and a lot of people will say, well, man, pastoring don't seem that hard. Ask any college person that had to write a 12-page paper or essay how much they hated it. They will literally be like, man, I can't stand. I can't wait to be out. So imagine every week you basically got to write a six to eight essay paper. Yeah. And you got to study for it. You got to make sure you have everything for it. Mind, you have to visit the sit. You got to prayer. You got to take on souls. You got to take on um, people that's going through things. You have to literally counsel and also counsel yourself and seek help for yourself. Right. So with that going on, with the pandemic hit, bro, I was at least, I was at, at least, at least four to five times out of the month, I was gone. Somewhere preaching or singing somewhere. Pandemic came, I have a two-year-old 
Mm-hmm. So at the time, one year old, so I wasn't putting him at risk. All my all my teenage daughters as well. All my wife, because my wife has asthma, so I can't. I'm in I couldn't take that chance. So God blessed me with a job at FedEx, and um, it was hard because now I'm juggling school, pastoring, music ministry. Now I got a nine to five, a whole another nine to five. Now, mind you, FedEx, I, I left that job. It was two incidents. Uh, it's laughable. Uh, I didn't know because I literally was trained for two days and we were supposed to be trained for two weeks. And I was already on my trip with my own route. And I didn't know you couldn't toss a bag. Like I'm talking about like a bag, journey's bag yeah. with a T-shirt in it. Well, a guy pulled a gun out on me at the job, man, on while I was delivering, called me the N-word, cussed me out, did all that type of stuff. And this was the second time it happened. One guy hit the car with a stick before, and man, they did everything, got everything situated. I never was able to deliver to that side again. Well, this guy actually pulled the gun. And bro, because I stopped delivering, when I threw that package, he got in cahoots with the guy that was over the neighborhood watch, and they videoed it, sent it in, and they basically was like, yo, we got to get him. We, we're going to let him go. Now, mind you, this is just a second job for me. So I'm OK. You know, right. I'm living all right. I'm good. I just can't do the road stuff. So I want to be able to do the same week I was let go. I got hired on with another trucking company where literally lesser days, more pay, which means with um, FedEx, I was working from Monday to Saturday. So I would get off of work at five or six o'clock in the evening, rush to the church, do Bible study, get out of Bible study, study for whatever class or whatever uh, <laughs> assignment I had to do, or you know, do the reading, the blogs, or answer, answer the people on the on the yeah. on stuff, which everybody hates. And then the next day, wake up and go to work. I did that Monday through Saturday. This job. They told me all I had to work was Tuesday to Friday. Right. I'm off Saturday, wow. Sunday, and Monday. So now I have time for everything I need. Um, ministry, feeding the homeless. Uh, we do serving Sundays every fifth Sunday. Um, this past week, we our, the goal was to do over a thousand Christmas toy to the community of Port Arthur. I mean, bro, the line was from Memorial Boulevard, that 39th Street, wrapped around the block to the church, all the way past Raceway on Memorial. I mean, over 500 plus cars just waiting to get served. And it, it, it joyed my heart to do that, man. So, you know, having that job, it's kind of, out. it's also showing my children, there's nothing that you can't do. If dad did it, hey, I'm doing this pastoring thing. And sometimes you get a pat on the back. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes right. your pat on the back is only from God. Yeah. Um, when it comes to music, sometimes you don't get that love. They don't. They don't want to spend like right now. I can attest. <laughs> it's funny, bro. I can go on YouTube right now and have twenty thousand hits. Yeah. I can go on Facebook on my music video, have a hundred and something thousand hits on the video but I can reshare on my own page from the community of the 409 and be like, y'all please reshare. But just because of certain things, you would expect the same type of love. <laughs> you got 30 likes, maybe a hundred out of, you all been my favorite. You will have 7,500 views for 30 likes. <laughs> like, right, right. It's crazy, but my kids like man you know despite what another person may say or despite how you may feel that you're a failure you're not look at how well you're progressing hey dad's showing you that not only do i serve god am i faithful to him i'm a tither i'm a giver i, I go to I, I i make sure i'm serving other people and while i'm doing that i'm not gonna fail at doing another job i'm gonna work right. i'm gonna work my butt off while i'm working i'm gonna make sure that I'm still being a father to y'all. I'm still gonna make every basketball game, football game, 
make every track me, go to every training session. On top of that, I'm still gonna get this music done. We're gonna get these followers. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And then on the flip side, hey, there's no excuse for you to fail in school. Because yeah. after all the stuff I just stated, I got straight A's in, in the class and I'm taking four or five classes this semester. I'm doing that too. You have no excuse to win. I'm teaching you what to do. Right. So that's that's my main goal, bro. It's like, I, I've always stated, man, uh, I definitely won't say where I stay or where I met, but because of God has been good to me to where I didn't have to preach and pastor for 30 years to have a brick home or drive a nice car. God just blessed favor. Right. So, you know, it's, that's just the best way I can put it, man. Like all those attributes put into one, if you're faithful to God, man, he'll turn it around, bro. Like, yeah, man, it's, <laughs> man, I'm he'll tell you what, what's steady going in my mind. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Yeah. And I, bro. Be added. Yeah. That's the, that's added. what keep playing in my mind, you know? I mean, so. it's, and it's crazy, bro. You have the best, the best, best, best life. And I've learned that I've learned how to take the opportunity to live for God instead of trying to live for my goals. Because mm. if I live for my goals, I'm going to keep reaching. If I live for God, Come on. I mean, I'm going to be at, I'm just going to be at peace. I'm going to live. I love the fact, like a lot of people be like, hey, man. I heard a rumor maybe two, maybe about, maybe about two months ago, man, they got to be fake because all you do is post his wife. They always out to eat. Are they going to do this now, nah, man? I actually love my wife, bro. I love yeah. going out to eat. Speak. I have four kids. Do you know how hard it is to have an intimate moment with your wife with three teenage daughters and a two-year-old son? So those moments to be able to ride in a car go look at a bigger house and be like, one day, babe, yeah. hey, one day I'm going to leave this job here. I'm going to retire. And that's my main goal. Cause a lot of people are like, well, why are you working these other two jobs? Why are you working so hard for this? Because I'm 36. And if I continue to stay on this job and God says the same, and I do what I need to do, the golden number that I had in my mind to retire at in three years, I can retire from work period. Yeah. It, like it's just setting that that goal and doing what's what's necessary. And bro, being at peace is the best thing you can be at, bro. Because it's like once God takes that hand and does this and says, "Okay, look, just follow these guidelines. You ain't got to worry about nothing else." It's like you just walking on, following favorite feet, man. You just sitting yeah. there, and just I'm good. Yeah, but yeah, bro. Like man, talk about overcoming adversity bro and just nah, bro. taking this further and further man like that's 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 awesome bro like appreciate yeah, it man. I, I, I never knew got on that. yeah I, I never I never knew a lot of this stuff bro so yeah so um yeah you gotta you know when when the album drop you gotta you know what I'm saying gotta let me know uh, let me know bro, when it drop it's on yeah, matter of fact when it drop. uh not only is the album dropping but the same redeem that you see on the cover, I, I'm hearing what people say, man, you take photo shoots and you do this and that. I've gotten over so many dope, so, so many dope DMs, man, and Facebook messages and text messages. Hey, bro, that cover is fire. That's not even a cover. I was just trying to let people know Yon is on the track. Yeah. But so many people hear it, I was like, okay. That's going to be the cover. So then I started getting the merch because, you know, Gospel Swag yeah. was the thing. So Gospel Swag is actually, you know, 501c3, you know, incorporated, all that good stuff. It's a business. So they literally was like, hey, bro, you dropping a Redeem shirt? Well, what a lot of, a lot of people didn't know, the reason why Gospel Swag stopped was because my dad and mother was in cancer spells. I had to take care of my family. Hey, man, I couldn't invest Two thousand dollars for no T-shirts and yeah. hoodies and hats. So now they like, hey man, when the redeem shirts coming out? So I'm like, you know what? Gospel swag merch. I see people doing the God is dope. 
We're going to make the gospel swag come back with the redeem. Going to do some more stuff. So it's just like, I'm just expanding the brain to like just go on. And I say this, and man, this this is my main, my main focus for this year in 2021 is realizing when people say, well, what did 2020 teach you? 2020 taught me God, God literally shut everything down to put everybody on the same level. Hmm. Hey man, uh, I we can say Ty Tribbett or Bishop T.D. Jakes is major in ministry, but he's doing virtual. Mm-hmm. He can't do it in person. What are we doing right now? Virtual. Yeah. Everybody is going from virtual, virtual, virtual. Everybody hopping from everybody's stuff. So all you got to do is expand your mind to make the person say, why should I watch you? Oh, man, that's dope. Now I'm going to chime in. Or I'm going to follow. I'm going to subscribe. Now you're on the same level. Every And notice not talking about any pastor or any business, but everybody kept on. Notice every major entity always said when COVID first started, hey, it's bad, but around March, we're going to get back in. Okay, after March, we're going to come back in August. Okay, we're going to come back in October. Yeah. Hey, man, God put a hand on that for a reason because a lot of stuff was being done in the wrong form. It was all about the commercial mega church. It was all about the commercial major business. Now you got people becoming millionaires like the turkey leg hood off a of food truck. Yeah, bro. Food truck business, man. It's it's so much for you to do, but it's kind of like God saying, okay, this pandemic came. I put you in solitary confinement for you to just trust me and trust my will. I already told you what I was gonna do. All you had to do was just follow my instructions. If I wouldn't have said, if I wouldn't have did this, you would have never sat down. Yeah. So that's the major thing I'm looking at. I'm like, this is what I learned. And I just capitalized, bro. I'm like, okay, you putting this out, you putting this out. All right, I know, okay, out of six, eight months, nobody has done what's been in on my mind. Oh boy, I'm about to drop this. Oh, I'm about to do this. And it's like, when it hits, it's like, you have so much that you can do and go to the drawing board with, man. I mean, yeah. it's too much, man. <laughs> it's too much. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Too much to win. Yeah, so that that makes me think about what you said earlier about how Darius knew Yahoo. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the importance of relationship and oh, yeah. people knowing like what you want to do, not just who you are, but who you are and what you're trying to do and how they yes, can, sir. You know, how they can end up helping you through a relationship that you ain't even have. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's that's is is so dope, bro. Like my family especially Los Angeles, shout out to my uncle who's just had a heart attack, man. And he got, got good praise report. He's headed home tomorrow or after having open heart surgery. But nice. all my life, bro, I've always lived between Port Arthur and Los Angeles between the summers and going back and forth throughout the years. So it's always been the connection. Like, bro, I got pictures and stuff where I'm going to hang with family, but my cousin is best friends with Ronald Bruno Jr. So now I'm sitting in a building with Ronald Jr. Bru- Ronald um, Bruno Jr., uh, Tony Royster, uh, some of the people from the Bad Boy camp. M- Megan Good and Holly Berry is in the same spot. I go to the tennis shoe joint. Most Def is in the same tennis shoe joint. We wrapping it up, we talking, and then you come back home and you got people like D Mac. Um, my first time when I got actually got a chance to understand jazz, he introduced me to Robert Glasper. Well, because yep. Robert Glasper, now I met Chris Dave. Now because I met Chris Dave, now here comes uh, Mint Condition, Carl Thomas. Yeah, we yeah. all know now. Now just to talk about the connect. You're in Dallas, so that means you're around people from Dallas, slither of people. Yeah, bro. Robbie, who play who you who plays with my group, does track. He's the lead musician for Carl Thomas. Yeah, like <laughs> it's the connection is like at your disposal to get everything you need done. Right. So it's like, and I, I think I think the key to that is since you connected, all you got to do is let people know what you want to do. If they don't know, so 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 here's one thing that I always preach. It's like they always say, it's about who you know. It's about who you know. I'm like, now it's really about 
is about who you know, what you know about who you know, and that last part that we talking about is what they know about you. If they don't know oh, that yes, you're sir. trying to do something, how they gonna help you? If Darius would have never knew you was trying to do a jazz album or you was trying to do uh, something with Yahoo, he could he never help you. You know what I'm saying? At all. So that's vital, bro. You gotta let people know what you're trying to do. You can't just, you know, keep your mouth closed now. Close right. And also, head. and also, as a musician, producer, and singer, what I've noticed now is, uh, and I might get in trouble for what people think with this one, but just being transparent, bro, I have a problem, especially with gospel music. Bro, you can't charge people over the head when it's supposed to be ministry. Yeah. Like, like, yo, like, where do we get at? Yo, I'm going in order for you to play on keys for me. You're worthy of your heart. But the message, hey, salvation is free. Yeah. And is. you going to charge me eight racks to make a song that possibly might not go number one to go charge somebody to go in church and do it. Bro, so the crazy thing right now for me is the loyalty between Texas, the Bay Area, and like around the East East Area. I kid you not, right now, the Bay Area really shows the most love. And it's crazy in the music world. Only because I can call a Mike Burrell or get in contact with a yawn hunter and say, hey bro, or a goose on on base and be like, hey bro, I need um we need a, a bass track or we need a drum track. All right, bro, shoot me a bill 50. We good. Yeah. I asked the bro right up the street. Hey bro, how much would it cost for you to lay these keys down for me? So I may mean, at least be about six. And then um, if you want me to get bass in, you know, I can add, add bass and then sound um, 1200. Bro, I ain't signing nobody. I'm just trying to get this out of my head and do this and do that. And bro, it's so much, man, like people will look at the producers so much too. They want to get on so bad. They want to be at the top so bad that they miss their opportunity. Hey, give me the person that comes to me and say, hey, man, I want you to produce, man. Can you get this? How much you charge? Hey, man, let's work that out if we get the track done. Yeah. Hey, this is what I charge, this, such, and such. But I'm not about to hit you over there because I'd rather have 100 clients where my name is getting out for a whole bunch of product where you're coming to me for business than I'm only having five product, <laughs> five people that I didn't charge 5,000 ahead because I'm trying to get on the top. Man, ain't nobody about to come to me for that. Yeah. So that's that's the big, you got to be logical in this music business because right now, bro, it's too easy right now, bro. It's too yeah. easy. They, they have too many programs to hit one button and you doing guitar chords and yeah. keys and organ full pattern. Yeah, bro. Even in the church world. Hey, man, I, I never will forget a musician uh, was like, man, I never forget. And I told him that day. He was like, you know, I'm always will be needed. I know I'm, I'm, good. and he's great. But when the pandemic came, they messed around and showed how hoop triggers huh? going all keys. <laughs> I kid you not, you probably don't even know it, but from February to March, I didn't even have a musician in the church, bro. That was all hoop triggers. I'm talking hymns, song. I'm singing big time and the keys killing. That's hoop triggers, bro. Wow. Because my homie Glenn Alexander hadn't came home from college yet. Yeah. Hoop triggers. I never knew, bro. So, bro, so it's like everybody just like, yo, man, it's kind of like with the game right now because even with musicianship, man, it's like when it this pandemic, like I said, set people down because a lot of cats was like, I'm worthy of my hire. Bro, we musicians, bro. We play drums, we play keys. Mm -hmm. Yo, bro, you, you want me to pay you eight to $1,200 for a Sunday? You ain't, you, you come to one rehearsal <laughs> and Sunday service. Uh oh, I dropped my stuff.
And then, mm-hmm. uh, matter of fact, not only that, um, uh, you do that service, but wait a minute, bro. I asked him, I said, well, if you work, don't you work at my job? Yeah, I work at this company. How many hours you put in? Oh, I put in 40. How much your check be? Man, by 800. But you putting in 40 hours. Yeah. But you want to break the bank of the church, which is supposed to be for ministry, <laughs> for only an hour and 30 minutes at church. Then you mad if you had choir rehearsal too long. So I literally feel God literally, because right now, every musician right now, including me, because somebody called me to play one night, and I was, they was like, man, I'm a short. Hey, bro, I ain't for no 500. Hey, man, if you can give me at least a bill, I, I'll go. Yeah. I, I'll come play. Hey, man, you need me to show up and rehearse? Hey, I'll do it. Hey, because right now, because of this pandemic, it can't be no in-person. With I in-person, people not really tithers like they are supposed to be, yes, which sir. means when you're tithing is... You know, so that may be meat in the house. Everything is meat is the light bill, the cable bill, the musicians, the staff in the lobbies and all that type of stuff, secretaries. So without them doing the right thing, that means, hey, man, <laughs> we got to cut everything out. Yeah. So, man, I think God really did all this, man, bro, just to open the eyesight for everybody to be like, hey, follow these plans, regroup, restructure, replan, go for it. Just pursue. Right. Because not af- after a whole year of 2020, if you don't have a goal and a plan and an outline of where you're going for 2021, you already lost. Yep. I've already told my church last Sunday, I told them, New Year's Eve, we're not, this This the new breaking. 2021, we'll probably possibly do it. But for 2020, it's no... We're not doing uh, the watch night service, bro. Hey, after 2020 of everything that people went through, spend it with your family. Hey, 2021, I want to look at my daughters and my son and my wife and say, yo, we made it Yeah. to another. Yo, give me a hug. I, hey, I don't have to go to church and say 10, 9, <laughs> 8, 7. I, I ain't got to do all that, bro. It's, hey, man, look. I want to bring it in with the people I love. And actually, bro, like I told transparency, bro, I'm just tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tired, yeah. man. And that that's that's what we got to do, man. So I mean, bro, I appreciate you like literally for 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 even this moment, bro. Cause seeing you, seeing how you excel, bro. I've been watching, watching everything, watching the videos, been watching the t-shirts, watching the hoodies, been watching uh the music that you've been putting out, bro, keep them covers coming, bro. I even get upset sometimes because it's only like 30 seconds. I'm like, nah. bro, we can't get a minute 30, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, I definitely appreciate it, bro. Like like I say, I just be jumping. You know, I, I get a vision and I just, I just go for it, man, and see what happens. <laughs> but, man, hey, I definitely appreciate you, man, coming on, bro. I appreciate your time, bro. You didn't drop right, a bro. lot of Anytime. Not a lot of stuff, bro. Yeah, I definitely no problem, appreciate bro. that, man. Anytime. Yes, sir. Prep, man, definitely love the opportunity, bro. Real talk. Real yes, talk. Sir. Look, please look out for the album, the gospel album, Redeem, the jazz album that will be coming out. Please look out for the book. Look out for the clothing line. And if you really, 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 really patient. You might even see a restaurant coming into play. Ooh, I'm just dropping there, man. I, I'm telling you. Yes, sir. We're gonna, we're gonna...